Hi, this is Eugene Blanchard of TelecomWorld101.com, and today we're going to talk about Voice over IP and TFTP, uh, Voice over IP and Trivial File Transfer Protocol. Uh, this is a copyrighted work, but you have permission to view it, to um, use it as you like, to um, a link to this, but you have to link to this website, the original website. Uh, you're not allowed to modify it, copy it, edit, edit it, and definitely not claim it as your own because that's just wrong. So, what is TFTP? Well, it's a trivial file transfer protocol used to transfer files. Now, something important, there's no authentication in it, so there's no login or usernames or passwords and that. What's it used for? Transferring configuration files from a TFTP server to a device. Why bother? Well, it allows one central location to store configurations. These configurations could be switch configurations, router configurations, boot P configurations, IP phone configurations, and firmware, and that's the stuff we're interested in. It's easier to maintain. You could have hundreds of switches, routers, and IP phones on your network. Um, we just did an expansion at where I work, and we had four new buildings, and we had a thousand switches installed. It would be a nightmare if you had to run around to each one of these switches and configure it. But what you can do is tell them to go get their configuration from the TFTP server. Same story with IP phones. You're going to have hundreds of IP phones on your network. Uh, DHCP helps. Now, what happens with DHCP is that when an IP phone first boots up, it goes to a DHCP server, gets its IP address and subnet mask and default gateway. And what it does is it requests the IP address of the TFTP server. So the DHCP server says, oh, here's a TFTP server IP address. And then what the uh, phone does is it checks the TFTP server to find a global configuration file, some firmware, and a unique configuration file. Uh, TFTP files are normally stored in C slash TFTP boot for Windows TFTP servers and slash TFTP boot for Linux TFTP servers. Something interesting is that no subdirectories are allowed. Of course, there's probably... Uh, Something will break that rule too. Uh, now, in our case, we're interested in IP phone files, and generally there are three types of files. There's a global file, and it contains things like the PBPX's IP addresses, VLAN information, quality of service information, firmware version, button configuration, and it's specific to an IP phone model or manufacturer make. Uh, next is the firmware files. The firmware files, we can update all IP phones firmware by changing the global configuration files. So, hey, upload this firmware. And we can tell the phone to reboot to pick up a new firmware. There's software like uh, endpoint managers, uh, provisioning uh, uh, software that we can tell all the phones to reboot with the new firmware. Of course, you do this after hours so that way you don't interfere with the uh, regular uh, telephone conversations. Now, the third thing it looks for is a unique configuration file. Right? It's identified by the MAC address of the IP phone. And it's going to contain things like the registers and proxies IP address. This could be two different um, servers or it could be the same server. Uh, the extension number, the secret, which is the password, a display name, speed dial, and more. So here's an example. This is a Linux TFTP server. Uh, tough to see on this, but this is slash TFTP boot. And this is a directory listing of it. And we're looking at Astra's. Uh, phones and Astra has a global configuration file called astra.cfg. Right. Uh, next thing we'd look for is firmware files. So this is for an Astra 6757i firmware and what we have is a file is sitting here 57i-st and that's the firmware file. You can see there's a whole bunch of different firmwares here uh, in this uh, TFTP boot directory. Then what it would look for is a unique file identified by the IP phone's MAC address. I've highlight, highlighted this one. This is the IP phone's MAC address here. It says uh, 0085D304D94, I think I missed a zero there, dot CFG. So the phone would go look for a file that's specific to its MAC address. Now what this unique file contains is it's a text file. You can actually uh, read it with a text editor. And it's this one is a little snippet I took out of it, uh, and this is showing for line one. You can have multiple, li multiple lines coming to an IP phone. And what it does is have the IP address, in this case, it could be a domain name also, of the uh, proxy and registrar here. This is 192.168.203.254. Uh, the proxy port it would use, 5060 for SIP. Um, timers like registration period and retry timer. Uh, display name, this one was just got, it was just a test phone, so it's called Astra 
one I C T, right? It could be a normally it would be a name like John Doe or something like that. Uh, the extension number you can have authentication name and username can, can be the same. In this case, it's the extension one zero one one, and a password or secret. This is one two three four A B, which is a horrible secret. You do not want to use anything that simple. You want to have a strong password so people don't break into your phone system. Something interesting is that in this line, it also tells you what the feature code is to access the voicemail star 97 so uh, you can set up a button to press automatically call your uh, uh, voicemail now all phones aren't the same Cisco is different so here's an example of Cisco and what it does is Cisco this is for a 7900 series phone uh, when a 7900 series phone first connects what it does is it looks for a file called capital letters OS 79 XX dash or sorry dot txt capital letters it's case sensitive something important to know so it's going to look at that file and it's going to have a very one line that's going to say p003-8-12-00 that tells the phone to go pick up its multiple firmware files so we saw Astra had one firmware this one has multiple firmware files uh, some of the firmware uh, some of the files here are things like the bootloader so it has a separate bootloader than the actual image and things so you'll see it says a dot bin dot SBN uh, dot loads and all sorts of things like that uh, I didn't do a screen capture should have done of a unique files not shown uh, for Cisco they either start with SEP or SIP and then they'll have the MAC address dot XML and Cisco has a whole bunch of different uh, formats for this uh, some of the other things you might find in a Cisco is that it'll have a file called ringlist.xml and it'll be a list of all the ringtones you can download and then you'll have all your ringtones uh, sitting in the TFTP directory too so Cisco is a little bit different but the idea is the same as you're going to download stuff from your TFTP server now what you can do is test the TFTP server uh, you can put a, a, a text a txt file text file in called I put test.txt file put it in your TFTP servers directory then from a Windows PC you can issue the command TFTP space dash I then the IP address of your uh, TFTP server this was 192.168.100.254 uh, get capital letters test.txt and it should download the file in this case it should go to this uh, C drive uh, subdirectory temp in this example right so you can test if you got it well what if it doesn't work well first thing is check if Windows TFTP client is enabled by default is not so you should be able to you should enable it uh, you want to check Windows firewall it does a great job of stopping everything including testing using TFTP client uh, something you want to know is uh, can you ping the TFTP server if you can't then you can't download anything uh, now here's a gotcha that uh, threw us for a loop uh, you cannot download to the root directory of C drive you have to download to a subdirectory like the temp that I mentioned before uh, this is Eugene Blanchard for telecomworld101.com this was voice over IP and TFTP uh, thanks for listening